as you mentioned with Nagute, like, do you feel like in some ways it's very easy to talk yourself, not necessarily you, but other people you might witness as well, like talk yourself out of doing something because it's too ambitious, such as looking back now being like, whoa, like, you know, that is a lot of work and maybe I didn't realize it at the time. But do you feel like some other people might suffer from that where they want to, they're so. at the brink of doing something great and then they're like, okay, imposter syndrome, I'm going to curl up. Yeah, no, it's a shame. I think, well, I'm sure a lot of artists, I'm sure I do, you know, suffer from that whole imposter syndrome thing. I'm not, I'm, I don't, I don't deserve this. I'm not, I don't, I don't belong here. I'm not that good. All that kind of stuff. Um, especially after you had a couple of reviews, <laughs> it makes you kind of question yourself. So, you know, uh, you have to develop a thick skin for sure in this kind of world. And um, yeah, you know, it's a good question. You know, I, when I made the ruin thing, for instance, that, that really ambitious thing, um, I, you know, I had a, I, I knew enough to be dangerous. You know, I didn't have a lot of people around me telling me, no, don't do that. You're going to, you're going to crash and burn. And then what, you know, so like, I didn't really have that doomsday thing staring at me, the potential. So that was kind of a benefit for me, but yeah, I don't know. It's a tricky thing, man. You know, I had, this is going to sound a little lame, but it was after I made the first Maze Runner movie. Um, I had the, the privilege to, um, be, I was going to London for some publicity stuff, right? Which was kind of fun. And I got this call from producer David Heyman. And David Heyman is the guy behind uh, Harry Potter movies, Gravity, um, uh, Paddington Bear. You know, he's a really, really good producer. And we had, he just wanted to meet. <laughs> he's like, I saw your movie before a lot of other people had because he was he was a part of this whole complicated thing of a financing kind of thing. And uh, he just said, dude, I first movie, this is great. I just, he just wanted to talk and meet. And I started telling him about what was next and all this great stuff and should I do the next movie and all this crazy stuff. And he just had these two words that seem so simple, but have stuck with me for now, whatever it's been, five or six years. And he just said, Wes, be brave. And that I tell you has stuck with me for so long that it's a simple thing, but it is hard to do. It is very hard to do when you have, oh, they're gonna hate it. Oh, you know, everyone on Twitter is telling me this is terrible, whatever it is. It's like, you know, you just gotta be brave. And you have to know inside if like, I have to make this, you know, I want to make this. And, you know, I think you just do it. And, you know, you're gonna burn. You're gonna you're gonna crash. You're gonna burn. You're gonna succeed. It's it's all part of the process. You know what I mean? So you got to be open to that stuff. And you know the, the last little bit of wisdom that I had from a, a one of my faculty members at the film school. His name was Andy Rubin. He said when we left, you're gonna have ten failures for every success. So make sure you get those ten failures out of the way as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so just do it. Know that you're going to fail. Don't 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 assume you're going to fail, of course, but just know, like, hey, that's part of the plan. I'm going to make this thing and it's not going to work out. I'm gonna, and I'm going to be next to the, on to the next one. I'm not going to sit there and tinker with it forever, making it perfect and get lost in that for two or three years. I'm going to go on to the next thing and the next thing and the next, thing, next thing. And I swear to God, it will just it will happen. Whatever it is that your goal is out of that, that it works for basically for shots, for movie making, for script writing on all fronts, you know, there's something about the movie guides in general. They'll shine down on you and it will it will happen on that 10th one or whatever, somewhere on the way there, you'll get your success. You know what I mean? So you just gotta, you just gotta plow forward, you know? I think a lot of people might say, well, it's easy to say that. Like, you know, just ignore the failure and focus on the wins. But I'm just curious for you, like, how do you see failure in terms of, you know, for me, I see failure as just part of the process is not failure. It's, it's just course correct, right? And it's kind of like what you were saying earlier that you're not going to have like a perfect plan that you're just ticking off the boxes. It's more of a general direction. And that means mm -hmm. that as one thing doesn't work, it just pongs you in the, in the correct direction until you do eventually get there. It's like, what's your perception of that? And to make it a bit more tricky, like also what's your perception of perfectionism as well? <laughs> perfectionism is a tricky thing. I struggle with it, <laughs> you know, especially, I think it comes from a visual effects sort of background where we are so used to pixel effing everything. <laughs> it can uh, paralyze you though, right? And that, that's a tricky thing. Now, I'm not sure what, you, are, you, are you talking in the context of visual effects? You're talking about in context of say directing or movie making, that kind of thing. As you said, I think it applies to everything. And that's why mm -hmm. I, got, I feel like you kind of hinted at both of these already. And that's why I kind of wanted to touch base. Cause I do think that people tend to look at failure as like, oh, it's easy to, to fail and get back up. It can be it's debilitating, not, yes. Yeah, but it, I mean, me personally, I don't see it as getting back up. It's that's the problem in the first place is the fact that a lot of people do find it debilitating. And I think that is more of a state of mind of how you interpret a failure versus it's data 
like, okay, that didn't work. Great. Let me try something else. Yeah, here. totally. You know, but, and, and, and the truth is like, yeah, it hurts. You know, it's something that you do something and like it doesn't get the response you want or people say it sucks or whatever the hell it is. It hurts. It, it doesn't feel good, you know, um, acknowledge that and then move on, you know, is, is the idea here. Like, you know, to have your time of grief, but then find the next thing to jump into and take what you learned from that experience and apply it. A lot of times it doesn't apply, by the way. <laughs> a lot of times you'll take what you thought you learned. It doesn't apply. The next thing. That's the kind of the fun thing about movie making in general, yeah. you know, is that especially even visual effects shots like, you know, experience becomes a great kind of like backpack to wear. But if it's not like a tool for the job, for every job, the movie making is like every, every project has its own unique, weird things that you have to solve. And that's, that's part of the fun of, I think the, the business in general, but, um, but you know, it's, it, it is tricky though. I, I struggle with it myself sometimes of like, what lessons do you learn and, and sort of, you know, you have to be careful to not learn the wrong lessons too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we are in a business, especially as a director, you know, um, a lot of times you are the guy to make the choice, you know? So it, to be in that place where you're starting to doubt yourself or question yourself or like, whoa, but last time I, I, this feels right, but I don't know, like, uh, uh, um, you know, it's like you can spiral out of control really quickly, you know what I mean? And just not, and be indecisive, which is the death of movie making, you know? Um, that kind of stuff can just kill you. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's something that everyone's got to navigate in their own kind of way. But I guess the biggest thing is just, you know, it's natural to feel bad and to feel hurt, but move on. And, and if you still, if you love doing this thing, you find the next thing to do and find the next mountain to climb, you know? And that's, that's, that's the, for me, the fun is, is the climb. It's, you know, it's, it's really fun to kind of show it to an audience, but for the most part, I can't watch watch my movies with an audience. It's really hard to do that kind of thing. I just, I'm my worst critic. So I can't, I just, I just, oh God, what, what, was, I, what was I thinking? What was, no, I love the experience on the way up. You know, that is so fun. That was like, you know, a really good example of that is the mouse guard thing, you know? Um, the mouse guard thing, we, we got shut down, you know, after, you know, about two weeks away from filming essentially. But it was a year and a half of, designing, I mean, every blade of grass of a fantastic world, you know, and inventing new kind of techniques and, 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 and working on pipelines and just like, you know, it was a blast. It was so fun. So, you know, I actually got a lot out of the experience, even though there wasn't kind of an end result at the end.